Lesson 4.4 is properties of rational functions. A rational function is a function of the form r of x equals p of x divided by q of x, where p and q are polynomial functions. Basically, you take two polynomials and you divide them. The domain of a rational function is all real numbers except for where q of x equals 0. So we've been talking about this all year. When you have a rational function, your denominator cannot equal 0. So you take your denominator, set it not equal to 0. Vertical asymptotes are the vertical lines x equals c, for which if as x approaches c, then the absolute value of r of x approaches infinity. Basically, as your graph gets really, really close to c in the x direction, your graph is going to shoot up towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity. A hole is a single point of discontinuity on a graph, so we take out one singular point. Those are both forms of discontinuity and are affected by what makes your denominator zero. Your end behavior are your horizontal or your oblique or slant asymptotes. So the horizontal line y equals L is your horizontal asymptote for which as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, as your x's get really big to the right or the left, your function approaches that value L. Oblique or slant asymptotes are y equals mx plus b lines for which as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, your graph approaches that oblique slant y equals mx plus b line. Those are both forms of end behavior. We have a new parent function, y equals 1 over x squared. So in the past, we've looked at the parent function, y equals 1 over x. And this is similar. The difference is now your denominator is squared. So I still have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I still have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, because that makes the denominator 0. But now if I plug in negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1 quantity squared is a positive 1. And then if I plug in 1, I also still get positive 1. So unlike 1 over x, which is in the first and the third quadrants, 1 over x squared is in the first and the second quadrants. So now try graphing y equals 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared plus 1 using transformations. Mm -hmm. So the transformations being done on this 1 over x squared graph is it is being shifted up 1 and right 2. So I took all of my y coordinates and I added 1. This shifts your horizontal asymptote up 1 as well, but it does not affect your vertical asymptote, because in an infinitely long vertical line, if I shift it up 1, it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to take all my x coordinates and I'm going to shift them right 2 by adding 2. It doesn't affect my horizontal asymptote, because again, if I take an infinitely long horizontal line and shift it right 2, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, but it does affect my vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptote is now at x equals 2, and my horizontal asymptote is now at x equal, y equals 1. The point that was originally at negative 1, 1 is now at 1, 2, and the point that was originally at 1, 1 is now at 3, 2. And then I'm going to follow my asymptote lines. Rational function discontinuity, we defined on the first slide. So there's two types of discontinuity. If a rational function is factored completely and x minus r is a factor of the denominator, then x equals r is either a vertical asymptote or a whole. It is a vertical asymptote if x minus r is not also a factor of the numerator, so it doesn't cancel. And it's a whole if it is also a factor of the numerator, so you could cancel that off and simplify it. it to, in order to find a whole, it's a xy coordinate. To find the y coordinate, you cancel the factors, and then you plug in whatever that value is into the simplified function. So anything that makes the denominator 0 is either a vertical asymptote or a whole, but it cannot be both. So for this first example, the f you always want to factor everything completely, both the numerator and the denominator. So I factored the denominator x squared minus 4 into x plus 2 times x minus 2. Both of these are factors of the denominator. They're domain issues. But there is no similar factor in the numerator. They can't be canceled or simplified. So therefore, both of these, whatever would make these 0, are going to be vertical asymptotes. So this one has vertical asymptotes at both x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. For number 2, g of x, the denominator and the numerator are both already factored completely. It's as simplified as it can go. There's only one thing that makes the denominator 0, and it doesn't also make the numerator 0, so x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. For number 3, h of x, if I set the denominator equal to 0, there's no real values that make the denominator 0, so there's no domain issues. Therefore, there's no discontinuity. There are no vertical asymptotes or holes. For k of x, I factored the numerator and the denominator completely. The numerator factored into x plus 3 times x minus 3, and the denominator factored into x plus 7 times x minus 3. So I noticed that this x minus 3 factor is in both the numerator and the denominator. The x plus 7 is only in the denominator. So because the x plus 7 is only in the denominator, x equals negative 7 is a vertical asymptote. 
Because x minus 3 is in both the numerator and the denominator, x equals 3 is a whole. But wholes are coordinate points, so you have to find the y value. So I'm going to cancel off the common factor and plug in 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 7 is 10. So I end up with a y coordinate of 3 fifths. You cannot be both a vertical asymptote and a whole at the same time. For rational function in behavior, we're talking about what happens at the very, very ends of the graph as x goes to either positive or negative infinity, similar to a polynomial function, but the end behavior is going to look a little bit different. The way that you can always find your end behavior is p of x divided by q of x. That's talking about division. So if you actually do the polynomial division being done, whatever the quotient part is, not the remainder, it doesn't care about this, just the quotient part, that is your end behavior. So as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, r of x, your rational function, will approach whatever this thing is. Um, so there's two different possibilities for rational function and behavior that we're going to talk about. The first is if you have a horizontal asymptote. So a horizontal line that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, your y values are going to approach a specific horizontal line. The first one is if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. If you were to do this polynomial division, you would end up with no quotient because the denominator is already bigger than the numerator. So f of x would be 0. If your degree of your numerator is equivalent to the degree of your denominator, when you did this polynomial division, you would end up with just a single number here that's not 0. So you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals whatever the quotient of the leading coefficients are. So we'll see that in an example what exactly that means. But it's this number that you get for uh, your polynomial division. The third option is if you have a degree of your numerator that is one more than the degree of your denominator. We're not going to look at anything more than one more. Um, we're just going to look at that option. And that creates an oblique or a slant asymptote. So if you do this polynomial division, you end up with an actual quotient that has an x in it. Um, and it's actually a linear function. So your function will approach this linear function. The way you find it is you actually have to do that long division or synthetic division, and it's whatever the quotient is without the remainder. For these three functions, we're going to find the domain, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, any discontinuity, so vertical asymptotes or holes, and any end behavior, so either an oblique asymptote or a horizontal asymptote. A rational function cannot have more than one. It can only have one horizontal asymptote or one oblique or slant asymptote. For g of x, I started by factoring completely. That's always your first step. The numerator is prime, x squared minus x plus 2. It does not factor. And then the denominator factors into 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. It's a difference of squares. So for a, domain. Domain is whatever makes your denominator equal to 0. You cannot have. So x can't be plus or minus 1 half. X-intercepts are where your whole function equals 0, which would be where specifically the numerator equals 0, but not also the denominator. So I set my numerator equal to 0, and it doesn't factor. There's no real solution, so there's no x-intercepts. For y-intercepts, you set x equals 0. Um, it's nice and easy if you have it in standard form here, because everything with an x goes away, and you end up with 2 divided by negative 1 or negative 2. For discontinuity, you have two types, vertical asymptotes and holes. Anything that is a domain issue needs to be either a vertical asymptote or a hole, but not both. So in this case, neither of these factors cancel with something in the numerator, so they're both vertical asymptotes. They make just the denominator 0, but not also the denominator, the numerator. So I have x equals negative 1 half and x equals positive 1 half. There's no factors that make both the numerator and the denominator 0, so this one has no holes. For in behavior, I have a case 2 problem where my degree of my numerator is the same as the degree of my denominator. So I'm going to divide my leading coefficients. So I get 8 divided by 4. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. We also said that you could do long division. In this case, it has to be long division because the denominator is um, uh, not linear. So if you do long division here, Whatever you get as the quotient part, excluding the remainder, that is your end behavior. So y equals 2. 
For the second one, our domain, anything that makes the denominator equal to 0, we can't have. So I factored completely. x cubed minus 8 is a difference of cubes. So x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. And then the denominator factors into x minus 2 times x minus 3. So anything that makes e the denominator equal to 0, you can't have. So x can't be 2 or 3. For x-intercepts, I set my numerator, numerator equal to 0, and I got x equals 2. This part never equals 0. For c, I set y equal to 0, um, and you end up with negative 8 over 6, or negative 4 thirds. For discontinuity, anything that makes the denominator 0 has to be either a vertical asymptote or a whole. So x equals 3, that factor does not cancel, so that's going to be a vertical asymptote x equals 2, that factor does cancel, so that is going to be a whole. And then I plugged in 2 into what was remaining. I got 2 squared plus 2 times 2 times 4 plus 4 over 2 minus 3. So you end up with a y-coordinate of negative 12. And then for your in behavior, um, this is a case 3 problem. The numerator is 1 degree more than the denominator. So you have to do long division in order to get your oblique asymptote. So I set up my long division here, and I got a quotient of x plus 5. It does not care about whatever your remainder is here. So my n behavior is as x approaches positive or negative infinity, y is going to approach x plus 5. So for the last one, I factored completely. The denominator is a difference of squares. x to the fourth minus 1 is x squared plus 1, x squared minus 1. x squared minus 1 is still a difference of squared, so you end up with x squared plus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1. So then domain, anything that makes the denominator equal to 0 is not allowed, so x cannot equal plus or minus 1. There is nothing that makes x squared plus 1 be 0, no real number. For x-intercepts, I set the numerator equal to 0. When is x cubed equal to 0? When x is equal to 0? Y-intercepts, I set x equal to 0. The numerator is 0, and the denominator is negative 1, so therefore you end up with 0. Whenever 1 is 0, the other has to be 0. Discontinuity, anything that is a domain issue must show up as a discontinuity. In this case, both of these factors are only in the denominator, not also in the numerator, so they are both vertical asymptotes. x equals negative 1 and positive 1. There are no holes. And then for the end behavior, this is a case 1 problem. My degree of my numerator is less than the degree of my denominator, and so therefore my end behavior is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. If I try to do the long division, there's no polynomial I can multiply x to the fourth by to get x cubed. So finding all of the pieces of a rational function, domain is whatever makes the denominator equal to 0 you're not allowed to have. X-intercepts is what makes the whole function equal 0, which for a rational function is what makes the numerator 0, but not also the denominator. Y-intercepts set x equal to 0 and simplify. Discontinuity are your vertical asymptotes and your holes. Your vertical asymptotes are anything that makes the denominator 0, but not also the numerator. And holes are anything that make both of them equal to 0. Anything that's a domain issue must be one of the two, but it can't be both. And then in behavior is what happens as x gets really, really big in the positive or negative directions. Um, if your degrees are either the same or the degree of the numerator is one less, you have horizontal asymptotes. If the degree is one less, your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. If they're the same, you divide your leading coefficient and it's y equals whatever that value is. And if your degree of your numerator is one more, you have to do the polynomial division that that rational function says, and whatever you end up with as the quotient is your slant or, your, or oblique asymptote.